Hello from a huge immersive theatre project dubbed the Soviet Truman Show to the delights of Paris Haute Couture Week. Thanks for joining us for Encore. Now let's start with the Paris premiere of a project featuring works from what's been called the most insane film shoot of all time. Ten years in the making, the controversial Dow opens this week. Showing at the Théâtre du Châtelet and the Théâtre de la Ville, it takes visitors on a trip to the Soviet Union. To take part in what is something between immersive theatre and a live video game, you don't buy a ticket, you apply for a visa. Olivia salazar Winspear tried to find out some more. Spread across two theatres and a gallery, Dow is an immense and ambitious artistic undertaking. And even getting inside involves an unusual process. If you want to take part in Dow, you don't buy a ticket, you apply for a visa. Because this is not just an immersive art exhibition, it's a journey into another time and space. That is the Soviet Union between 1938 and 1968, which has come back to life here in the center of Paris, and it's open to visitors 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The idea is to leave the modern world behind you and enter another realm, preferably without your phone. Before entering Dow, visitors can fill out a psychometric test, and that data is then used to create a series of personalized experiences, all with the help of this tablet. So let's go. Into a cabin for a private performance, screening, a session with a religious leader, psychologist, or even a sex worker, behind the secrecy of a curtain, of course. To an intimate performance from a shaman in his commonalki or shared apartment space filled with mid-century Russian furniture. To a classical concert with a full symphony orchestra. To the Soviet-era bar for refreshments to one of the projection spaces to watch the magnum opus that is Dow the film. In 2009, over 400 people left their everyday lives to go back in time to the Soviet Union. Ordinary street cleaners, barmaids, families, famous artists, Nobel Prize winning scientists and notorious criminals. Cut off from the modern world. For over two years, they lived and worked at the Secret Research Institute finding themselves in a familiar but strange world. People became open to new discoveries, personal and scientific. They fell in love, betrayed their friends, cheated on their lovers, ran experiments, grew old, had children, were arrested and lost everything. The result was over 700 hours of 35 millimeter film. Experiment. Everything the participants went through at a specially constructed institute in Ukraine was filmed, even their most intimate moments. Jurgen Jurgis was one of the cinematographers involved. The first weeks in this special situation, let's say, was for me it was very hard because I felt sometimes as a voyeur a little bit and after some time it, 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 it stopped because our people there in, in the institute were, it was not, 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 nothing bad for them or nothing disturbing. Some of those participants have made the trip to Paris, or at least their alter egos have. Yekaterina initially joined the project as a makeup artist and went on to produce these uncanny silicon models which populate the world of Dow. Yet some of the humans they're based on underwent violent and disturbing experiences back at the institute in Kharkiv, which is documented in the Dow films. I think the films do a lot because um, they bring you, they can force a really strong reaction. 
emotional reaction, positive or negative. We had definitely um, situations where we said, no, we're not going to do this because this is, not, this is just not fair for the people. They trust you and you are, of course, you are empowered to manipulate them to do something, but that was never the intention. It was, you know, the intention was always to create a surrounding that they can be free to act. And what they do together is something that you can't, you cannot force. With input from artists like Marina Abramovich, music from Brian Eno and participation from Gerard Depardieu and Isabelle Huppert for the French version, Dow is plunging Parisians into its mysterious, experimental universe before the project moves on to London and then Berlin. And you can get your own visa for a trip to Dow. The event is running non-stop for 24 hours a day until the 17th of February. It premiered more than a year ago, but because of controversy connected to its distributor and its actors, the American remake of the French hit, The Untouchables, has only now made it into cinemas in the United States. The Upside has done surprisingly well at the box office, despite mixed reviews. Peter O'Brien has more. On dit non, on les met pas, on reste là. Spot the difference. Ouais. C'est bon comme ça Attends. Eh, 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 eh. Just relax. I am relaxed. This is me being relaxed. A French comedy drama which became the highest grossing movie ever in a language other than English has, more than seven years later, been released as an American remake. Penthouse. The Upside was supposed to be distributed by the Weinstein Company last year, but was shelved and sold off following sexual abuse allegations against producer Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, I've been looking, trust me. The film stars have had problems too. Kevin Hart stepped down as this year's Oscars host over past homophobic tweets, and Brian Cranston came under some criticism for playing the role of a disabled man. And now there's the mixed reviews. Critics praised the lead's performances but called the film preachy and cliché. Some were particularly scathing. One room with a view said it was produced on the assumption that Americans don't read subtitles. An easy paycheck for its three stars and an afterthought for those behind the camera, the upside is a blank non-entity, objectionable in its regard for race, class, disability, and good taste. Which car is yours? All of these to the right. Despite the press, audience feedback has been mostly positive. The upside's also done surprisingly well for sales, doubling industry expectations as it opened in North American cinemas. The original, The Untouchables, was a massive box office hit in France. Thanks to its success, the much-loved actor Omar Sy has gone on to have roles in movies like X-Men and Jurassic World in Hollywood and beyond. His new film is out in France this week. Yao tells the story of a famous French actor who visits Senegal and retraces his roots with the help of a young boy. Concretely, I was able to do a film like Yao because of having done The Untouchables. That already is a direct result of The Untouchables. It also means I can work in the US. The film has been an amazing passport, a great gift, a magic box. Yao is out in France this week. Next, it's highly anticipated but also dreaded by restaurant owners across the world of gastronomy. The Michelin Guide 2019 has been published. 68 restaurants have made the list for the first time. Peter O'Brien takes us now to a restaurant in Toulouse in southern France to meet a chef who's been awarded his first Michelin star. This morning, the telephone's not stopped ringing. Chef Thomas von der Cher has just earned a Michelin star, the fruit of three years' hard work. We were very happy. Everyone was happy. He plans to keep going just as before, offering a local cuisine, which he thinks is what pleased the jury. We cook with local produce, which showcases local artisans and farmers. His team's proud of an achievement that they've purposefully worked towards every day. I'm so happy for him. We've worked to get the star specifically, so I'm really happy. It feels so good to work in a Michelin-starred restaurant. It's because our cooking is simple, it's good and it's genuine, and because we've worked hard over the last year. 
For the first clients into the restaurants, the proof was definitely in the pudding. It's very flavorful, quite modern in presentation and with delicious local ingredients, so it's very good. Reservations for Le Senec have doubled in a day. And with a set menu for lunch at 39 euros, relatively cheap for a Michelin-starred meal, it's not just the prestige, but the price that's bringing customers flocking in. Despite the snow and the sleet, fashionistas from around the world are in Paris for Haute Couture Week. The celebration of these high-end, made-to-measure creations takes place twice a year in the City of Lights. And we're going to leave you with a glimpse of collections from Chanel, Valentino and Jean-Paul Gaultier. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Thank you.